Hi guys, welcome back to our next part of Aeolian. Okay, we're going to be covering part 2 today in this video, part 15 of our overall physical job series. Okay, today we're going to be covering Aeolian processes. This is part 2 of our 4 part Aeolian series with your first previous part linked up there in the right hand uh, corner of the screen. Okay, it was an introduction to Aeolian, what Aeolian is, as well as what are the factors you're going to be needing to know which will come into hand for your explanation on why processes exist. As, as well as to explain your landforms in part 3 and 4. Okay, I'm going to jump straight in and not waste any time because this part is quite tricky and it can be a bit more content heavy. Okay, firstly, what am I going to go through is an overview of all your wind processes. When I refer to wind processes, I mean erosion, transportation and deposition as the three main big processes. Okay, then you've got your sub-processes which we'll go through later on part by part. Okay. Alien processes. Firstly, you have got erosion. So I have not gone through river with you guys yet. I will be going through that part after this cast alien series has ended because I think this is more pressing. Okay, but it's very very similar to those erosion processes as you have heard in rivers. Okay, firstly you have got erosion, you have got transportation, you have got deposition. Under erosion, you have got deflation, abrasion, and attrition. Under transportation, you have saltation, reptation, suspension, and creep. And lastly, under the de uh, deposition, you have got sedimentation, accretion, and encroachment. Okay, may sound very, very complicated now. It's fine. I will go through it in depth later on as we progress in the video. Okay, firstly, Aeolian processes. This is roughly what you're going to look be looking at when it comes to different types of Aeolian processes. You notice from here alone, okay, you see you have got wind speed, which is on your left-hand side over here. And then you've got the different processes which have actually formed um as a, um which they have so nicely joined up for you over here. Okay, you can see that I have got abrasion. Abrasion is an erosion, erosion type process. Okay, and then the rest of them here are actually um transportation. Okay, except attrition. Okay, attrition is also erosion. And lastly, um, I mean, not lastly, sorry, but the rest of them, okay, you have got saltation, creep, as well as suspension. These are going to be your transportation processes. So you notice that just on this diagram alone, you can roughly tell which are the more important processes that we're going to be needing to take note of. So later on, if you see a star, okay, next to such a process, it means that that process here is, is going to be very important. Okay, most likely you're going to have to use it when it comes to your cast landforms explanation. Alright, firstly, you have got wind erosion. I'm going to be covering the all three, deflation, abrasion, and attrition. Firstly, deflation. Very simply put, uh, the definition of deflation is the picking up of dust, sand, or any loose rock fragments and particles, okay, whereby it is essentially the entrainment of looser materials by wind. So over time, this would lower the ground, and hence, which is why you'll notice this is important for Yadangs. Take note first. Okay. Essentially, what actually happens during deflation, deflation okay, is that your dust is basically picked up okay, very lightly and kind of like just loosened by the wind. So as a result, all these materials which are actually picked up and then later on dropped off, okay, it's not really transportation, okay, but it kinda, it's kind of like a bagging sort of effect on the particles. Which is why you notice over here that I've said okay, it's often pre weathered by salt weathering before they go through deflation. So deflation, if... Simply put, right, I, I cannot phrase it any any easier than this. It's really just the entrainment of loosened materials by wind. Deflation is slightly important, okay? Just take note that you need to use it for your dunks. Okay, abrasion is basically the mechanical wear of rock, okay, due to impact of particles in saltation. Okay, saltation is a transportation um, process. So you notice that what actually happens is that abrasion is occurs when another particle hits when a particle hits another particle. So as they hit each other, um, essentially the other particle that is hitting the the particle that is on the floor over here, that particle was essentially in saltation. Okay, saltation is basically where particles they get carried up to a certain height and then they fall within two meters of range. So they basically get picked up and they get hit against another rock or another particle. As a result, this will actually dislodge other grains. So these bouncing particles will actually dislodge the other grains, which would cause this case of a abrasion effect on um, the grains. As a result, all of them will start to wear and tear. Okay, attrition is 
very very simple actually it occurs when your wind bond material okay, is in constant motion and then they start to bang into each other so as you can see from this picture alone right as they bang into each other they become even smaller so this is a form of erosion erosion essentially is when anything big becomes small that is erosion so as a result your particles will actually become rounder and smaller take note this is what attrition is all about okay so those are your main processes for erosion next i'll move on to your transportation Okay, transportation saltation is going to be your first most important one. You need to take note, okay, that what saltation is, is basically the bound land and rebound. So when your particles are being lifted up, okay, let's say if they're very, very light, right, they're being lifted up for a very short distance, okay, usually less than a height of 2 meters, they are basically lifted up and then basically thrown back down. So as they're thrown back down, that is when it hits another particle and if you recall, that is actually a process, right, it is um, an erosion process which is called abrasion. So saltation and abrasion usually work hand in hand, whereby your particles are picked up from the ground and then later thrown back onto the ground, hitting into another particle, which erodes that particle. Both particles erode. As a result, that is abrasion. So you notice from this diagram alone, you can see. Saltation is essentially the key process, okay, which actually powers your suspension, creep, and reptation, which I'll go through after this. Because, right, the main reason why is because the size of the sand, which is getting picked up, will determine whether it continues to move along the floor. Okay, the one that moves along the floor is going to be your creep and your reptation, or whether they will be lifted up into the sky, okay, slightly above 2 meters, to hit into this suspension zone. So this suspension zone is where they start to like float around in the air until they become very heavy or if the air becomes stale or like it starts to stall, then the particle will just collapse. If not, saltation is the first one which actually sieves through. Okay, are you a heavy rock or a light rock? If you're a light rock, okay, you go into the suspension zone. If you're a heavy rock, you stay on the floor, you become a creep. It sounds a bit weird actually. Okay, but we'll go through why. Okay, so adaptation is basically on hitting the surface, saltating grains release a small splash-like particle. So basically, it's kind of like attrition to a certain extent, but it's not really erosion, but it is the motion. So when your particles actually fall onto the floor, okay, they may splash about. As a result, these small little particles will splash here, splash there. So that splashing around, you think of it like a puddle, right? You step into a puddle, then there's water which splashes everywhere. That water which splashes and moves a bit of distance, that is called reptation. It is basically a form of transportation. Next is creep. No, suspension. Whoops, sorry. Okay, suspension is essentially smaller size particles. So like I said, which are very, very light, for instance, or if they are very, very small and fine, they can get carried up and travel over long distances. Okay, so these can usually account for the reason why you have the formation of sand dunes. You have the formation of lowest deposits. It is because of all these smaller particles which travel very, very far to a point whereby the air becomes, um, where the air starts to stall, so as a result, the particles would lose energy and then they would then collapse and fall back to the ground. Okay, creep is a bit easy. Actually, it's also very easy. <laughs> Everything seems to be easy. Wow. Okay, creep occurs when coarse sand and small pebbles, okay, it's like the, the basically the heavier ones, they inch forward and roll forward, okay, with a sliding effect, okay, based on the momentum that has gained from the slightly picking up of them. So as they slightly lift off the ground and fall back, they will start to roll. So think of it like a boulder, okay? It's just rolling on the floor because of a certain momentum that you have pushed into it, which is caused by the wind. So as the wind pushes it, it will creep along the surface. Creep, very, very simple. So as we cover this whole transportation part, remember that your most important is none other than sortation because it powers the rest. So when in the event you need to compare between the different types of processes for transportation, you know that sortation will play the biggest role. Okay, there's this other thing called the B B Bernoulli effect. It is the reason why all this transportation takes place. Okay, I'll only cover it if you guys actually want me to cover it. If not, I won't cover it because it can get a bit confusing as well. Um, but it is a higher level of evaluation in the case of your Aeolian series. Alright, so next I move on to wind deposition. So the wind deposition is responsible for the formation of sand dunes and loess. Okay, when it comes to your yadang, okay, yadang tends to be more caused by transportation and your erosion. Okay, whereas things like sand dunes, loess tends to be formed as a result of deposition, wind deposition. Okay, first one is very boring, sedimentation. It's very, very simple. It is when your grains start to fall out of the air or stop creeping forward. 
So as long as your grains stop somewhere, okay, let's say they stop moving forward, they stop creeping, rolling forward, or if they just fall out of suspension, this would be the process of um, sedimentation in terms of deposition. So when you're, it's basically, you just think of it as they fall out of the, of the sky. Lah. So this is usually due to insufficient force. Let's say if your, your air stalls, okay, there's no more force in your air, or either that when the sediments become very heavy, let's say they, they start to form together, they start to, as they move, they cling together, they become bigger, they may become heavier as well. As a result, they will just fall off the air. Alright, accretion is a bit more important. It is basically the process which stops sortation. If you recall, sortation is a transportation process. Correct? So transportation process which occurs less than a height of 2 meters. So when accretion occurs, it is basically forcing the grains to actually hit the floor. So when the grains hit the floor, that is a form of deposition. Why? Because they have been deposited. Ma. So when the greens hit the floor due to sortation with a lot of force and impact, okay, as I've written over here, okay, with great force, some of them may continue moving in the form of creep, whereas the majority may come to rest. So all those which come to rest is basically the deposited grains. So all these deposited grains are basically your accretion. Okay, next I've got encroachment. Encroachment is basically the main deposition process responsible for the formation of sand dunes which we'll learn in part 4 it should be part 4 okay so sand dunes the reason why they are formed okay, is because deposition occurs on a rough surface so whenever you are referring to a rough surface that is usually the dep deposition process behind it is usually encroachment okay it is just very simply put that okay it's just when your coarser grains get deposited on a rough surface so for instance let's say if you've got a rough windward side of a sand dune okay when your wind is coming in and it's transporting all these sediments as they hit this windward side and they hit the coarse grains your coarse grains get may, may get released as a result because of friction as well as the weight of it hence that is the process of encroachment Okay, so we've kind of finally come to the end. Okay, what are the exam requirements? Okay, essentially for this topic, you need to know the wind, the different wind processes of wind erosion, transportation, as well as deposition. You need to know all the sub-processes as well. So your abrasion, your deflation, your sortation, suspension, accretion, encroachment, all the different types of processes. And it can usually come out as a possible 12 mark essay question. Okay, I require, it requires you to understand the sub-processes and it usually acts as an explanation to your later on part which is your alien landforms which i'll leave a link in the top right hand corner of the screen so go check it out as well okay so your last part on part three part four will be the most important part of this alien series which is going to be your alien landforms whereby you're going to have to require these processes as well as factors from your part one of the series to actually explain how these landforms form so make sure you go and understand what these two series are you can go ahead and play back this video if, you, if, if need be make sure you really understand what the different aeolian processes are because each of them play a part in the formation of a yadang sand dune loess they all will play a part so you need to really make sure you understand those okay so this part two okay, has essentially been like a prerequisite knowledge to the later on parts which i'll be covering so that is actually all I have. Yeah, that's all I have. It's actually very easy if you think about it. So go and study hard this topic. It is an easy topic to score if you really understand the simple processes which go on behind it. Don't worry, take your time to really go and study and understand it. But make sure you look at my later part 3 and part 4 videos because those is where I'll really be driving, jumping in depth to discover more about all these processes and how they work in conjunction with the formation of a landform. Alright, so if that's all, okay, I hope you did enjoy this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy and be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. If you have any questions, do feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. I can't even remember words are getting twisted. Wow. Yeah, but do be sure to leave any questions you may have in the comment section below. Okay, you can also check out my Instagram page. I'll be linking it down below as well, whereby I will maybe post some tips and tricks or that kind of stuff as well uh, in the long run. If not... That is actually all I have for today. So to the next video, I hope you continue to work hard. Right, We are approaching possibly the end. Maybe not. Okay, Maybe your A-levels could be this year. could be next year. I have no idea who you may be, but it's all good. Okay, I hope you leave a comment down below so I can actually get to know you better. 
Alright, that would be great. If not, that's all I have. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace out.